oil-based trucks versus what I call conventional trucks or the most common trucks I guess you would say because I'm currently in this truck temporarily and that's a whole nother long story but it's got a little bit longer wheelbase than uh, what I call conventional and when I say conventional obviously you have your Volvos I'm not a big fan of a Volvo but I would say I have had a couple of them in my opinion as far as a truck goes they're probably the most maneuverable and then you go into the Kenworth T680 and the Freightliner Cascadia, Freightliner Columbia, you know, stuff, stuff like that. The Coronado, it's not too bad. It, it's a little bit longer wheelbase, but it's still fairly maneuverable for, you know, what it is. It is a cool looking truck. Myself, I would take the maneuverability. Like the Freightliner Cascadia, I think that's probably the best truck as far as being maneuverable and still having a large sleeper the Kenworth T680 the sleeper size is not bad it's definitely doable and the truck is maneuverable so you know that's a good truck as well but if I had to pick I actually would take the Freightliner Cascadia because I'm not all about looking cool going down the road <clears throat> now longer wheelbase trucks are in my opinion they look a lot cooler and they have some benefits to them like this one here is a 2019 it has a studio sleeper on it right so the sleeper is pretty big I mean it's freaking huge if you ask me um, but I don't really need a sleeper that big because I don't intend to be spending a whole lot of time in the sleeper I just go back there eat sleep maybe take a 34 you know things like that my time needs to be spent right here behind this wheel making some money now this truck um, it rides better that's for sure with the longer wheelbase it has a nice ride to it and I have driven a lot of what I guess they call large car front set steer axles back when I first started driving truck that was pretty common to get assigned a big ass hooded long hood non turning fucking truck and I ran the east coast with them for a while but I didn't like it and I will say they in my opinion handle better in icy and snowy conditions because the wheelbase is a little bit longer they're a little more control to it but overall I prefer the maneuverability of the whole deal because over the last couple weeks I've been driving this truck and right now I'm doing like produce and horticulture and things where you know I'm not going to Amazon Prime and Walmart hubs I'm going out to like farm fields and orchards and places where they don't have loading docks and oh you know just kind of off the beaten path type shit and I've had a few issues because one is just getting used to driving the truck when I first took off with it you know if you're used to driving a T680 or a Cascadia like I have been I think I went to make my first corner and damn near had to stop and back up because I didn't cut my turn tight enough because this takes a little bit more to get it to turn, right? And in my muscle memory, I'm used to a certain point of turning the wheel. And you basically have to uh, kind of get yourself trained to start to turn a little bit sooner. Now as far as tra trailer swing goes, that really don't matter all that much it's kind of hard to explain but you would think with the longer wheelbase that you got to swing wider you don't really because the truck wheelbase is longer so the the rear axles are tracking in a different spot than like if you cut hard with a shorter wheelbase so you're still getting the trailer swing out of it I mean you do have to swing a little bit wider and you need a little bit more room but for the most part you know cornering and stuff like that's fine the main thing that i have ran into is like the truck stops say like this one here is big so i had no problem getting in here last night but the truck stops where you got rows and then the row right in front of you is not very far across like they just measured it out to barely be able to fit into a, a spot the east coast is notorious for them florida has a lot of them they're a little tight you got to kind of wiggle the truck in there a little bit 
and with the conventional you know you can get some nice turns out of it and straighten your your tractor out well i've been coming in with this big freaking hog you know later at night trying to squeeze into a spot and it's doable you know i can back it in it's not that but i'm working at it you know the damn thing takes forever to swing back around you know because it's longer and it takes a lot more room so i can't just whip into my spot i gotta kind of work at it kind of like a rookie a little bit and then the one night down in florida i pulled into the ocala and uh part for the night when i woke up in the morning and i went to get out i couldn't get out because it wouldn't make the turn so I had to wiggle, 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 wiggle it over to the right a little bit, but not too far over because I don't want to turn sharp enough to where my tail whip takes the guy next to me, takes his mirror off, you know. And I still couldn't get the son of a bitch out. And uh, I ended up having to slide my tandems to get it out of the parking spot. And I was only like, you know, inches off the fender of the other truck to get that damn thing out. That's a little bit of a pain in the ass in the morning, you know, versus if I would have been in a T680 or a Cascadia, I would have just pulled out and been gone. And then, uh, you know, getting getting back into some of these places that I've been getting back into, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of backing up and backing in off the street. It just takes more of a swing to get it in, and a lot would be, you know, if I had been driving it already in two weeks you know i'm getting better with it but my first week was kind of a shit show to be honest i just was not first shotting anything you know i kept not either turning tight enough when i start or turning too tight and not swinging out soon enough so i had to pull forward and all this bullshit but yesterday i was coming into bradington florida to pick up at this uh, horticulture place and it's kind of hard to explain but it's weird like they got these horticulture farms and then the fucking condos and shit built all around them you know because the horticulture farms were there first and so basically it's a congested fucked up area a little bit but you're still going in to pick up horticulture so I take in uh, I'm coming in there I'm like 41 or whatever it was and I need to go on 115th Street. Well, 115th Street is like this tiny little fucking road going back and there's no street sign. So I'm watching my GPS and I'm creeping pretty slow. And the GPS all of a sudden just kind of spins out. And I'm like, where the fuck is this road? And then phew, there it went. And I'm like, that's it? Because I thought it was a driveway. It didn't even look like a road. Well, now I'm past it. But if I'm going to keep going, I'm going to go all the way to the bay. And I'm going to be right down at the beach, like within a mile. I'm going to be down at the beach. And you don't want to be down at the beach in a big truck. You're going to be fucked. So basically what I ended up doing is I came up. And it was four lanes. With a, a center turn lane. Well, in a T680 or a Cascadia. You can whip a Yui in that amount of room. Not this big old fucker. You'd be lucky to turn the tractor around in that fucking... You, you couldn't whip a U bobtail with this thing in that. The way the steering cuts on it, you would have to pull around and back up just to do it bobtail. So I'm like, fuck. And I ended up having to jump over in the oncoming traffic. I gave them plenty of room. They were way up. They could see me. That's about all you can do. Because what am I going to do? Back all the way up, go to the beach, get cars behind me, and fuck, you know? So I ended up jumping over into oncoming traffic and then just whipping out on the road and fucking blocking the whole road off and I had to back into a cross street and then, you know, turn out that way because it was the only way to turn it around. And then, of course, I get back in there and it's horticulture and you got to do all this back and through all these buildings and shit. But it's just a real pain in the ass to me. I don't really see the benefit in it other than they look cool, they ride better. And overall, you know, when you get into those tight places, whether it be a truck stop, shipper, receiver, made a wrong turn, you gotta write that, you know, whatever it is. I don't really give a fuck how big my sleeper berth is. I mean, it can't be no tiny little, like Prime has with their, you know, trucks. Some of their trucks have real tiny sleepers on it. It can't be something like that. But just a conventional sleeper is fine by me. 
T680 of Peterbilt, Cascadia, something like that. As always, make sure you check out Trucker Path. It's a great app. I can't believe how many people haven't heard of it. it tells you where the parking's at, how much is available, food reviews, shit like that for the truck stops, all kinds of different things. Repairs, truck washes. Check it out.